Yo guys, what's up? This is Jay Barr with Bar Creative, and in 10 minutes or less, I'm gonna show you guys how to set up a low pass filter to get that effect in Logic Pro 10. Um, hey guys, don't forget in the description, I put the time code in for certain parts of the video, so you can skip right to those parts if you wanna get the information just on that thing. Again, this is Jay Barr with Bar Creative, 10 minute tutorial on how to set up a low pass filter in Logic Pro 10. Yo guys, what's up? This is Jay Barr again. And uh, when I first got Logic, I wanted a way to like phase my drums in and get that like like that cutoff kind of effect on them. And so what this video is going to do is it's going to show you how to use the low pass filter, which um, Logic actually has. And I think GarageBand might even have it. Um, but anyway, Logic actually has a low pass filter in it that you can use as a cutoff. And so just a quick example, what I have set up here is just, I just took the Steely Beats um, Ultra Beat Kit just because I wanted something quick. I don't have any, right now I'm working a machine a lot, so I don't really have any recent Logic projects. But anyway, um, I got my Steely Beats here and I just took the first pattern. Um, and so I'm gonna play it. And so you could hear it kind of phasing in. Let me show you, I actually have some automation on this track and I'm gonna show you how to set all this up. All right, so this is the general idea um, of what we're going to do. We're going to use a low pass filter as a uh, you know cutoff and resonance. We're going to set up natively in Logic, so you don't need any other plugins. This is 100% Logic stuff. So I'm going to start a brand new track. I'm going to take you through the whole thing. I'll do Ultra Beat um, just because I have drums. You could do this on any track, by the way. It could be a vocal track, it could be anything. Um, but we're just going to stick with Ultra Beat because I've already kind of ran through it in my own mind. So now I'm sharing with you guys. Um, by the way, thanks for the likes. Uh, if you like what you're seeing, please share it, guys. Uh, I got big dreams for this channel, and um, there's more to come. It's not going to be just music. It's going to be a whole thing. So, uh, all right, so we've got our Ultra Beat. I'm going to go into the, whoops, click on the Ultra Beat. Hopefully it opens sometimes this week. There it is. And what I'm going to do is go down to the drum kits. And I'm just picking Steely Beats. You could do this at home if you want to follow along. And if I hit play on this, you'll, you'll see that's what it sounds like without the filters. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to press Y to get rid of this library. And what I'm going to do is click on the Audio Effects tab. And it's buried down here. It's not anywhere in here. It's all the way down in these audio units, and I'm going to click on Apple, because that's what you guys have. These are all stuff that I've purchased over time. Click on Apple, and I'm going to go to the Low Pass Filter. And what you're going to see is, and by the way, let me set this up so that we can actually analyze this. Um, by the way, last week I did a video on Ultra Beat stuff, so if you want to know um, more about it, you can check out that video. I'll put a link. Uh, but anyway, once you have a pattern going in Ultra Beat, so here's our drum pattern. Once you have that pattern, if you want to put it in as MIDI tones, you can just, or MIDI notes, you can just drag the pattern in. My favorite command in Logic is the Option key and drag, and you can duplicate very quickly. And so now we have our, our drum beat. Now we have this low pass filter running over it. And there you go. So the resonance is like this little peak. Okay, and you can hear how it kind of makes it real tight and tingly, and then if you're down here, it's kind of a more rounded sound. So this resonance is kind of how it's shaped around your cutoff frequency, and the frequencies are along the bottom here. So in this video, you kind of need to know what a cutoff is. Cutoff just means it's going to cut off all the frequencies outside of this blue range here. So it's cutting these off. So if I go down, I'm letting all the bass through, and I'm cutting out the treble, and that's why you hear that bass pumping as I bring it in, I'm bringing in some of the highs and so forth. Now, uh, hold on a second. You can also do this with a high pass filter, but I don't want to run too far out. This is 10 minutes or less. I want to show you how this works. So we have our pattern. We've got our low pass filter, but I'm kind of not cool with having to drag this in order for it to change. So what I can set up now is I'm going to hit the B button and B is going to bring up my buttons. I think of it. Whoops. Got to click off of that filter. B is going to bring up my buttons, and you're going to see it's set up for an Ultra B kit. Um, I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to go to the automatic smart controls, and I want to go down, and I kind of like the way the vintage 
synth eight looks and you'll see I have my levels here so if I click and drag on this you hear it cuts the kick out um, nothing groundbreaking there but let me show you how to set it up so your low pass filter is affected by these so I don't really care about these last two I, I would say if you're gonna figure out what knobs to use pick the ones that you care the least about in this case I don't care about this one and I don't care about this one so here's what you do I'm gonna stop playing that you go over here to the um, kind of information panel for this seek this uh, controller and what you do is you click on this tab and it's going to bring up everything that you have on the track so whatever I'm running through the track right now I have controls for uh, in, in addition to just general track controls which are down here in the main so I'm gonna to go to my low pass filter and you can see there's only two options there's the cutoff and the resonance so what I need to do is I need to click on the knob that I want to program click on these arrow looking things go to my low pass filter because that's I want I want the filter like to be controlled and I'm gonna click cutoff frequency now check this out I'm gonna hit play and you can see I can control this and you can see it controls it somewhat imperfectly so in this case because the scaling on my frequency is not linear in other words it goes to 12 24 it's exponential growth um, I need an exponential curve to control this in a way where watch when I go down to the bottom it just kinda drops I don't like that I want it to be smoother so there's ways to easily, easily fix that. Back in the information panel, you have the scaling. And right now we have a linear scaling, but this is not a linear scale. Okay, and I don't want to get too mathy on you guys because I'm not a math guy, but I know uh, an exponential growth curve means this where it doubles, you know, and it goes up. And so this will be a much smoother curve. So let's check this out. I'm going to hit play. And now you can see the actual control and it's much smoother. Okay, and you can even mess with that. I still have some drop off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag my curve down a little more and that should smooth out that lower drop off. I mean, it's not perfect, but again, we're doing everything natively in logic. I didn't spend any more money. This is all in logic. All right. So that's the cutoff. Now I also want to control this resonance. So that's what this one's going to be. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to click on the dial, click on the arrows. I'm going to pick the resonance. And this time, this is a linear scale. Look, 10, 20, 30, 40, 10, 20, presumably 30 and 40. And so when I actually turn this knob, you can see how smooth that is. So I don't actually need to mess with any of this stuff. Sweet. So now I have my setup. So now I can go in and I can control each of these. But still, I'm not good enough at that. I don't want to click on it with my mouse. So that's why I have my MPD226 drum MIDI controller here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it up so that this dial and this dial control my cutoff and resonance. Here's how you do it. It's really simple. Highlight the knob. Stop this real quick. Highlight the knob that you want to control. Go to learn. And then what you're going to do, be careful. Whoa, be careful not to drop and smash your uh, controller, but be careful not to touch any other button because whatever button you touch first, it's going to program to that kind of a pain to get them undone. It's not that bad, but it is easier just to do it right the first time. I'm going to control it right here, and you can see right away it's working. Now, it looks a little glitchy. All I got to do is click, and that's the other thing. Once I program it, immediately turn the learning knob off because if I went over to this one, Oh wow, this one's already programmed. If I went over to, I'll, uh, that might be an artifact from earlier, but anyway, if I went over and touched this, it would program that one as well to be the cutoff. So anyway, I turned this knob and now you can see it. So check this out, like this is where it's cool. So you can actually like, now you can control it with your MIDI controller. Same thing for resonance, even though I already have mine set up. Let's see what it would look like if I were to undo this see it brings up all this crazy stuff and it, it kind of drives me nuts to be honest um, but what I could do is highlight this I think if I hit delete yeah it'll unassign it um, so let's just say I want to learn this okay so I have resonance highlighted I click on learn and then I turn the knob I want for my resonance and there it is immediately turn learn off because otherwise it'll keep assigning it and here you go so when I hit play I can control it with two fingers now, two, two hands, I mean. And you got all this movement going. Hey guys, I'm actually going to cut the video short there. Um, 
I go into how to automate the process to where you won't, don't have to actually use the dials. That's going to end up being the next video. That's a whole thing in and of itself. I was going way over the time limit. So my whole thing is I want to give you the information you need in 10 minutes or less. And so that was the video on how to set up the controls in Logic Pro 10. The next video is going to be how you automate your filters so that you can just get a sequence going and you don't have to actually use the dials. So if you're interested in that, check it out. Again, this is Jay Bar, Bar Creative. Glad you enjoyed it. Later.